What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the start of another portrait painting demonstration. So we are going to start yet another Rembrandt from Google Arts and Culture. Yep, we are on a mission. We're eventually going to do pretty much a master study of all the Rembrandts um, someday at some point. Uh, so what I have here, these are fast drying oil paints. They are Alkid oil paints. The brand is not as uh, important, but if you must know the brand, um, it's a pretty good brand. I like it. I like it. It's um, called Paul Rubens. I did a, um, a video a long time ago, a video review of, about their paints. Um, they sent me some paints to do that review. Um, but I'd say that the most important thing is to make sure that your paints are always artist grade which is what those uh, paints are. So we are gonna have some fun on this aluminum. Uh, hey there, welcome, welcome, Megalo Mart. Uh, welcome, welcome, Sharon TD, welcome, welcome. So this is aluminum. This is gonna be very different to what you are used to when you're starting a painting. And I would almost go so far as not to suggest you do this. Um, I would suggest you tone your surface, or at least um, gesso it. But of course, you know me. If you don't know me, uh, I like to challenge myself. Uh, so this is totally possible, but a little bit difficult uh, to start out on aluminum. So as you notice, the paint will slip around. This is actually the back side of a painting. Uh, that which I've painted over several times so um, yeah it's not I don't recommend it however it's kind of fun to do um, one side of these panels is um, going to be a little bit smoother than the other so I'm going along with the background um, and somewhat guesstimating where the head is going to fit. So the goal for today with this classical start on aluminum is going to be to just mainly cover the aluminum and leave none of this, maybe some on the bottom, uh, for next time. So essentially what I'm doing here is an underpainting that's going to be a little slick or really slick. Uh, so I'm using titanium white uh, for all intents and purposes just a raw umber type color raw umber color so we're covering around the background nice and easy the first layer is always going to be quite slick um, unless you tone it. And this is, like I said, this is the back side of a canvas. This is the back side of a, excuse me, of a panel. So it's got some fingerprints. It's got some stuff on it. Like, um, it's not the cleanest surface to work on by any means, but I like a challenge. And this will definitely be a challenge so just black and umber black umber and white is what i'm using just ivory black raw umber white we're going in with a shadow it's gonna fit so we're gonna have a light and dark brush i'm gonna just add a thin coat kill off some of the aluminum for a second here. As these are alkyd, they will stiffen a lot faster than, um, or become tacky faster than uh, traditional. But you can use anything you want. You can use cobras, which are the water mixables. You can use um, regular oil paint. You can use acrylic paint on these panels if you want. You know, that might actually be easier because it'll dry. Um, you can use pretty much anything you want. I'm not so sure about watercolor on these aluminums, um, at least unprimed. 
So the nice thing about it is it's going to be really smooth. Not that this painting that we're doing a study of is that refined, but at least we can make it pretty smooth. These panels are absolutely, uh, absolutely durable. So I could paint over this portrait later if I want to, and uh, I could paint over it several times, make many different paintings on this, and and it'll be just fine. A rigid support is always going to be a more sturdy support. Um, let's see if we can go in with a somewhat in the middle brush. Not a big brush, but say something in the middle. And now we're adding some light. By classical style, I mean no color. And we're going to focus only on values. Alright, so that seems to be working. So we'll have a light and a dark brush. So when you're working with aluminum, because it's so slick, you don't want to go in linear, linear uh, approach. You don't want to use a linear approach because it is going to be a gigantic nightmare. Um, so you want to go in with mass. Mass is going to be your friend. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, mass is basically a, whoops, there goes the brush. And I'm not even using my opposite hand this time and I'm still dropping brushes. Mass is just shape, a big block of something. And we're, th we're thinking about this as a huge block. A, uh, almost like a, um, a, a piece of clay that we're sculpting. Different, very different from the start of the last uh, portrait that we did. The last one was how I was taught to paint. This was, this is how I eventually um, uh, transitioned into working with mass general shapes big picture yet deliberate marks don't be afraid to get it wrong make your shapes simple and easy such that you already know the rest what I usually say but if you don't know uh, keep your shapes simple and easy such that when the time comes it always does to make changes those changes are simple and easy to manage. And pretty much like a, uh, almost like a abstract. It starts almost like an abstract. And uh, from the angle I'm looking at, there's so much glare on the aluminum that I have to stand pretty far back. Um, I always suggest you stand an arm's length away, but I'm almost more than an, I actually am way more, this is the furthest my arm extends, so I'm further than an arm's length away from this thing. Hey Monique. Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome, welcome. Hope all is well with you and your family. So I'm starting this off very, very loose. And just like I said, the paint will get a little tacky and it's already getting tacky. So this will be dry for sure, at least I'm hoping that it'll be dry for, uh, for Wednesday. We will return on Wednesday. You may have noticed that I missed last Wednesday, so uh, story time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so if you have a car that is not a push to start, 
and you use a key to open your car make sure that that key is the key from the dealer the um, not from the dealer but from the, the original one with the plastic end yeah when I bought my car I bought it from a CarMax it had uh, it, they gave me kind of like a replacement key long story short the key wore out and so I couldn't turn the wheel or I couldn't turn the car on because the wheel locked and then it wouldn't unlock so I was stuck in a shopping center yeah it was kind of annoying but um, by the time I got out I was so tired I wasn't able to do that um, so mega low mark keeping the shape simple is the hardest thing well if keeping the shape simple for you is difficult then the most important thing is going to be for you possibly to stay further back uh, than you currently are when you're further back like I have to be because of the massive glare of this canvas it's gonna be quite difficult um, to go in with little tiny shapes and hold the brush from all the way back and so Monique you wrote uh, oh thank you for the, the Christmas wishes oh the key thing happened to you dang it's terrible isn't it yeah I'm gonna uh, have to contact the nearest Nissan dealer and have them uh, create a uh, new key for me luckily I had a spare key uh, but I had to wait for my wife to get off work so yeah I was sitting in front of a grocery store for a long time trying to turn my steering wheel from people who were looking at me like I was trying to steal my own car it was it's a little funny uh, now that, now that I, it's happened already I can laugh about it it's pretty hilarious um, hey William Bogart uh, yeah this painting is in the National Gallery of Art in DC at least last I saw it it was Maybe it moved somewhere else. I don't know. It could be in a different national gallery. I don't know. But last time I saw it, yeah, it was in DC. And um, it's a, this is a cropped version of the original painting. Old cars are the best. Yeah, mine is the 2018, so it's not as old so 2018 Versa so yeah but yeah that was what happened to me on Wednesday so I was not able to to do the stream William, you wrote your favorite is the Murillo 2 Ladies at the Window. I think I know which one you're talking about. The one that's like an oval shape or something. I think I recall that one. I'm not sure. So National Gallery of Art represents... Yeah, and it starts out like this, pretty crude. And if you're not familiar with the YouTube channel, uh, if you're not familiar with what an what an abstract start, simple shapes look like working with mass, it looks hilarious. It looks it looks like I don't know what I'm doing. It looks like I haven't been painting for most of my life. Uh, but trust me, I have been painting for most of my life at this point now. I think. Um, so really the most important thing is understanding your materials understanding what it means to simplify uh, and, and how you can build a painting rather than force it it's a building process it takes time So William wrote the, the the one was I looking right at us. I think I know which one you're talking about. So you wrote. Uh, let's see if I can read that. 
Benson teaches to get the face crude at the beginning stage. Well, basically, that's what this is. It's quite crude. <laughs> it doesn't get any more crude than this. Um, this type of start, you really have to trust yourself because this looks like a creature. Uh, anytime there's an unfinished face, it always kind of evokes this scary movie kind of thing. Just like, oh, it's a ghost coming from the corner of the haunted mansion. Coming for your soul. Your soul is mine. Uh, that kind of feeling. Um, but you just got to chill. You got to understand that it's a building process. And uh, it's, if anything, it's more liberating to, to start this way, I think. Megalo Mart, you wrote, uh, referring to the car, you looked at, you looked at a car, Respect, uh, expecting to see a vintage car that brings ladies to the window. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, hey, Fernando, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, thanks, thanks. That's funny. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely liberating when you can start a painting and not worry about what it looks like um especially if you're doing a live stream i mean I, I could i could turn her neck almost into like a snake if i didn't add this part of the shoulder you'd probably think that i didn't know how to draw the proportion of a neck but i mean look at the negative shapes look at the simple shapes think about it as a structure and I honestly think that this is more efficient when you have a, a little more experience in painting. This is more efficient than um, than the, the way that I showed you last time, which was the way I was taught. And nothing against in Kamenati, of course. That's an excellent school. I don't, I don't doubt that. It's just, um, I'd say that being able to work more mass oriented um, like this without having to work with all those lines is actually a lot uh, easier, a lot easier. But drawing becomes a bit of a challenge if you're not used to starting this way. So let's see. Ugly duckling to beautiful swan. <laughs> That's a good one. Hey, Christina. Oh, good. Thanks. The creature stage. <laughs> That's a good one. The creature stage. I always call it the uh, the awkward stage, but I like the creature stage. Creature stage makes a lot more sense. And I bet you, I bet everyone probably forgot this is on aluminum. <laughs> so I kind of have to work this way. Um, I don't have the option of a uh, careful controlled outline. And uh, it's an unprimed aluminum. So it gets even, even worse. Unprimed aluminum starting like this. The creature, it lives. It lives. Um, eventually, the creature will come to life. Throwing in shapes, simple light and dark patterns. Keep the shapes simple and easy. Don't worry about little things that are that are uh, off. Focus on creating a structure that has form to it. And even if the form is off, as long as it is dimensional, it's easier for you to push a shape into a position rather than a series of lines. The shape is composed of lines, but if you think of a shape as one singular uh, thing, then it becomes much easier for you to think three dimensionally because instead of moving lines, you're moving shapes. But the beginning is definitely uh, creature like for sure.
Now, Alkid oil paint is definitely a difficult paint to work with if you've never worked with it. Um, and I would suggest that you, if you have any curiosity with Alkid, just buy one tube at a time so you can get used to how it works. I personally don't use it um, that often, but I chose to use it this time because I, I needed to get tacky so that I can work with these shapes. Uh, I can have a little more control in the tacky form, but it, it is not as um, beneficial for your brushes, unfortunately. Uh, my brushes are definitely going to take a beating from this. So it, it will force you to clean the brush after the painting session. You will most certainly have to clean it. Because it will become tacky in a matter of hours. Alright, so question that I'm going to ask everyone is, uh, let's start with a simple one. Where in the world are you? In case anyone here might be new. Where in the world are you? I am in Alexandria, Virginia, where everything is incredibly expensive, and the house down the street the two-story house down the street costs over a million dollars. Um, I am, we are renting here, of course. Um, very expensive area to live, but um, I've gotten used to it. Megalomart, you're from Tuscan, Arizona. I probably mispronounced that. That's the state one of my students wants to move to. Uh, Randy wants to move there. Hey, Christina, Tennessee. I went to Tennessee once. Um, on a motorcycle trip to a place called uh, Tale of the Dragon. At least I think it's in Tennessee. Hey Paul, oh New Orleans, Massachusetts. Oh, I have a student in Massachusetts. So Megalomart, you wrote. It's so hot here, I do not like the desert, even the, the, uh, the, the plants have spikes and thorns, yikes. Yeah, I don't do well in the heat either. But if I were to choose where I live, I think I'd still choose this area now. And the uh, main reason is because I live 15 minutes away from a, a, a billiards academy. I was supposed to get a snooker table today, but I don't know if they're actually getting the snooker table today. Uh, 
That happens to be my favorite game, Snooker. Hail Hayes. Oh good, I'm glad that this is inspiring for you. I'm glad that you're drawing while I'm painting. Awesome, awesome. From Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome, welcome. I will have to use a fan brush, though you may not see it. Actually, I think you can. It's glaring like ridiculous. The glare is unreal. Hey, Christina. Oh, you're in Memphis, too. Cool. Maybe you all should uh, go to a painting session together. And I haven't, I, I must admit, I have not been to a drawing or painting session in, oof, gotta be over a year now. But that's, a, that's why I do these master studies, um, because this builds your uh, skill uh, when you don't have access to live models which I don't. Uh, it's uh, difficult, really, but this is one of the best things you can do to improve your painting or your drawing. Monique, oh, you hate glare. Yeah, the glare is a thing. It's not as bad with water mixable, but it's a thing. That's why all my brush strokes are in this direction. Now I believe that my basic shapes are close. So I should be comfortable enough now to add smaller shapes. And I'm not gonna work one section at a time yet. Still going to be working all around. I will, I will not use a uh, sable brush with Alkid. I do not recommend you use a sable brush with Alkid. I repeat, I do not suggest you use a sable brush with Alkid. It will demolish your sable brush um, because it'll get tacky so fast and cleaning it will be a nightmare um, as will these brushes. It will be kind of difficult. Monique, you don't see any glare on my screen. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, if I were to put a brush stroke this direction, oh, wow, you don't see it. Never mind. It's not glaring as bad as I thought it would. So Christina wrote, you wrote, if you could recommend one exercise to improve 
Uh, value transition in skin tones. What would it be? There's, uh, is there such an exercise? So, value transition in skin tones. Um, well, I would always advocate for um, master studies um, like this one uh, for any skill building, but for um, value transitions on uh, faces uh, specifically I would recommend doing a monochrome study of uh, of a Rembrandt or or someone like Rembrandt so pretty much your question the answer to your question would be exactly this exercise that I'm doing but don't do it on an aluminum, an unprimed aluminum, because it will be very difficult to work with um, because the paint's going to be really slick. Uh, so this uh, exact study, actually, this exact approach would be, I think, the best for you to work with value transitions and skin tones because that's all you have is the value transitions. Everything is value at this point. Value and shape. Yeah, uh, this this exercise would be the one that I would recommend for sure. And focus for as long as you can on um, just two to three tones, but mainly two tones, light and shadow. Um, light and shadow on its own can do a lot of, a lot of uh, heavy lifting for a, a composition, uh, for anything really. Light and shadow is absolutely um, vital. If your light and shadow fundamentals are solid, you're going to have a much better painting experience um, because your fundamentals, like anything in, really, um, and fundamentals are key. Even though the, this looks like a chicken, chicken neck, the face, the likeness is not even close. To heck with it. It doesn't matter because what I've done is I've set the stage. These proportions are relatively close, not perfect, but they're relatively close so that next time I, when I return to this, I'll be able to go in with more specificity. Um, if you were to start with specificity first, that's fine. Um, but it, it's a tighter start. Um, so it's hard to have a tight start when the uh, surface is as slick as this panel. But it can be done. Well, thank you for the questions. I really do appreciate the questions. It helps with the stream. I wonder if Rembrandt himself started his paintings really loose, and I think he did. You can see in his later years his paintings were very loose, and I think that's how he would have started his the majority of his paintings. I think I can't I can't really know because I'm I'm not of course I'm not a time traveler or am I? Maybe I am, uh, but no, I'm not a time traveler, so I can't really know how Rembrandt would have painted.
But I can tell you one thing. I do not think that he uh, built his paintings up uh, in a careful manner. I doubt it. it. I can see that he worked with with masses, with planes. Um, you can see with all the texture in his paintings as well. So now I'm adding more light. Here's another tip for you when you're doing a um, underpainting. Work lighter than you think you need to. Uh, if you're working in uh, with a monochrome underpainting in the classical style. So in the classical style, you want to work lighter because it's easier to layer darker color onto a lighter underpainting. So for example, what what's my what's the highest I can go? It's pretty bright. Um so that's a gauge for just how much I have uh how much room I have. So I've got plenty of room where I can add more contrast. Next question for everyone, and this one is not really art related, but I think it would be fun. Uh, what is your favorite TV show? What's your favorite TV show? And uh, I'm going to add a bonus question to that. Uh, can anyone guess what my favorite TV show is? I've mentioned it uh, many times before. And if no one can guess it, I'll start to drop hints. What is your favorite TV show? Recently, um, I was rewatching Supernatural, but given that it has 15 seasons, I'm kind of taking a break. So I'm watching, um, why not Earp on Netflix with with the wife? We're also still trying to finish a Star Wars marathon. So Adam Long, you wrote, is getting over the mental challenge of painting shapes and value over likeness a difficult task? Um, yes, actually, I think that's one of the best questions I've I've uh, had asked in a long time yes that is an excellent question uh, getting over the mental challenge of prioritizing shape and value over likeness is a very difficult thing to do because it's not natural it doesn't come natural to us to um, basically almost become like a, a disassociated from the fact that we're even painting a portrait um, so yes, that is a very difficult thing to do, uh, is to disassociate from the fact that it's a portrait, from the fact that it's a portrait, into thinking about it almost like a still life. Um, excellent question. And you know how to get better at that? Is to do this, but paint over a painting. I would, I would recommend you, if you don't like a painting for some reason experiment painting over it and try painting like this um, and you will it will force you to uh, to think shape and prioritize shape and trust yourself and know that you can obtain the likeness later on now obviously there's many ways to do this um, I mean that's the beauty about it is there's so many ways and uh, depends ultimately on you trying as many uh, approaches as possible until you find something that you like. But once you find something you like, are you going to do the same technique over and over and over again? Maybe if it's the one that works for you, especially if you're doing commissions and 
and uh, everything depends on side exercises where you paint over paintings or you start something like that and don't worry about the likeness the likeness will happen it's, it's absolutely within your your um, your skill to get likeness but if you start your painting out thinking about likeness uh, trying to force likeness rather than letting it happen it's it might not be as fun uh, to do but again I I say this knowing a lot of my friends my uh, teacher friends that start off prioritizing likeness more careful approaches um, so there's many different ways but uh, but in, in all approaches I will say that yes every one of them has uh, every one of the artists that uh, like John Singer Sargent, John William Waterhouse, uh, Rembrandt, Artemisia, like uh, Vigée Lebrun, uh, like everyone I could think, Nelson Shanks, all of them have at some point learned to disassociate uh, from from the likeness. Yes. Oh, I just read The Walking Dead. Awesome. Yeah, I, I took me a while to finish that one too. Um, but yeah, The Walking Dead is a great TV show. Um, Christina, your favorite is Game of Thrones. You were watched too many times to remember. Awesome. And uh, Adam, you like Doctor Who? That's cool. That's cool. I don't think I've seen Doctor Who. Nor have I seen Game of Thrones. But uh, uh, something to add. Megaloo, Mart, you wrote. Uh, what kind of discussion is is the what? You wrote that kind of disassociation is the key in your opinion to realism. Yeah, I would I would say so. And here's the thing, everyone. Uh, when you're learning something, and this is not just about painting, when you're learning something new, you are adding a new way of thinking, a new, a, a new way of, of problem solving into your thinking process. And, and you will benefit in many ways um, whether it's in your analytical thinking or your um, your shapes like um, and how you think about things spatially your geometry your sense of geometry um, you will and it will change the way you see the world um, with everything that you learn whether it's a sport whether it's learning how to paint whether it's learning how to cook, whether it's learning golf, or pool, uh, learning how to play the piano, um, you will learn to think differently and you'll learn to problem solve in uh, different ways that you would not have known had you not uh, tried something new in life. I'd say very, very healthy for your mind to um, create new neural pathways, basically. Um, to explore different ways of thinking that you maybe didn't explore in the past. It will help you. Like working with shape. I mean, um, this helps me a lot and I, I think it helps me in my, my pool game because I'm a uh, beginner pool player. Um, I can see angles without people having to point out systems to me like I can kind of picture where the ball is going to bounce from one rail to another and somewhat predict how it's going to react um, so it, it really does benefit you in many different aspects of life patience is another thing that you uh, build with with painting your patience is always always um, tested with um with painting let's see christina you wrote there's a british show called portrait artist of the year you've been shocked how many times the judges have picked ones that have less likeness well that's interesting thanks for pointing that out you wrote it's hard to rewire the brain to paint what we're looking at instead of what we think we're supposed to look at there you go uh that's another good good one there um it is 
first you learn um my uh artist buddy which i got a contact i haven't spoken to him in a while his name is marshall kinsley uh wrote uh, or said said uh first you first you paint what you see then you paint what you know then you know what you see um so basically when someone starts out and they don't have any training they're painting what they see um but they don't have any knowledge of shape or any knowledge of anatomy and all that stuff it's it's all intuitive um and then they get training and then they start to paint what they know um then eventually you know what you see which means you know the anatomy you know the perspective you know your your approach to um to what you're doing you know your process so you know what you see So for example, I'm okay with all of these features being a little bit off today. Uh once once the stream ends today, I can go to sleep comfortably knowing that I blocked in the big shapes of light and dark whether I made the chin too big, the chin too small, doesn't matter whether the eye is a little bit crooked, um whether any little minutia is out of place is not an issue um it's all about the big picture and if the big picture is solid it's like a building uh it's like having the scaffolding to a building um uh, i don't care about the the shutters i don't care about the gutters i don't care about the wood flooring the windows the doorknob um i care about the underlying structure is this is this house going to fall apart is the second layer going to fall into the basement it doesn't matter how pretty it looks if the foundation is not there the thing is going to collapse um that's the kind of thinking that you want to have in painting painting is and and it should be something that is taught to everyone and uh unfortunately it's not as uh prevalent especially since stem kind of ruin uh rules not ruins i mean what am i talking about i have a stem degree <laughs> i have a math degree uh stem runs pretty much everything um and even when you do take an art class uh it, it could be that someone's trying to get you to express your feelings uh and don't worry about the technique draw these pretty flowers however you want and there there's some merit to that of course but shape proportion value perspective the right exercises to do will make you improve if what you're after is realism of course um and by realism i don't mean photorealism i don't mean making the thing look just like a photograph um that's why i always advocate for these master studies uh, especially if you don't have access to uh a a place where you can paint a live model draw from a live model so no one guessed my uh favorite tv show so i'll just uh, give you a hint there's a uh a uh, talking robot in there that uh is powered on on beer uh is is uh, the robot is uh its fuel is is beer and the robot's last name is Rodriguez that's a little, a little big hint there and i've actually painted that robot in several paintings in the past even on previous live streams 
I'm giving lots of hints. All right, next question that doesn't pertain to art, um, but is a, I think would be an interesting question. What is your favorite song? Your favorite song of all time, or at least currently your favorite song. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm currently on a, kind of like a 80s, like a kind of like a retro trip. So I'm listening to a lot of remixes of uh, Love is a Battlefield. Love is a battlefield. And then uh, the song where it says, I need a hero. Of course, I can't play that song because I'll get demonetized, so. What is your favorite song? Hey, Stephanie Thompson. Welcome, welcome. So I'm asking more personal questions this time. Your favorite song? L. Hayes wrote big, uh, big jazz fan. So, uh, Booney James, song called Butter. Cool. Can't say I've heard that one, but cool. So the tackiness definitely helps at this stage. Cool, yeah, check it out, El Hayes. So Stephanie Thompson. Uh, oh, you're responding to... I thought that was a song. See, Adam Long, you wrote too many talented folks to say one, but you love the song To Build a Home by the Cinematic Orchestra. Another one is, uh, oh, don't know how to pronounce that one, Stevens or John C. Cool. Not sure of them, but awesome, awesome. You don't think you can pick one favorite song? Uh, you were around when Love is a Battlefield came out. Awesome. It must have been a big hit. It's so popular. There's so many, like, so many remixes of it.
William, you wrote, yours is Curtis Mayfield. People, get ready. Oh, another one I haven't heard of. Alright, so I'm gonna need some kind of some kind of soft brush. I'm gonna get I'm tempted to get my acrylic brush. Yep, I'm gonna get my acrylic brush. So there's uh I just wanna make this a little softer. Let's see, Stephanie Thompson, I was partying to uh, Love is a Battlefield in your team. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. So William, you wrote, Eva from Bowie, Maryland has the best cover. Oh, cool. Maryland, that's where I'm from. So I'm now in Virginia. How does acrylic brush differ? Uh, it's softer because it's a synthetic, but it's not like expensive and like high end like a like a sable brush like like this would be. Um, so if it gets ruined, I'm not really that worried about it. Um, though I can easily clean it off with the. Uh, Mineral spirits. Well, no worries, Adam. No worries. Never at any need to apologize for a question because that helps. Questions help with the stream a lot. Hey, Blair. Ashley Blair, welcome, welcome. Yeah, yeah, you're right, William. There's too many speed cameras, speed traps in Maryland. And DC. Oh my gosh, DC has so many speed traps. Adam Long, you're in, oh, you're in Hanover, Virginia. I'm not sure where that is, but um, do you know of any painting groups around here other than painting classes? I can't find any. And I can't find any with, like, long poses. Like, everything is, like, a short gesture drawings, which are good to do, don't get me wrong, but. I much prefer long poses. If you find one, we can paint together somewhere.
So, do I prefer acrylic or oil paint? Uh, definitely oil paint. However, I, I will incorporate more acrylic, especially in my online classes. So, acrylic is... You can think of acrylic and oil painting, like any material, the fundamentals are the same. It's the paint handling that's different. It's just the paint handling. So someone doesn't necessarily have to be an excellent, say acrylic painter or, or solely an oil painter. Um, it's the paint handling that's different, but not the fundamentals. This could be done with acrylic, um, and it probably would have been easier working on the aluminum with the acrylic. Um, but there's there's pros and cons to, to all of it. But yeah, I prefer oil paint because it doesn't dry in, in a couple minutes. Uh, it gives me time to work with. William, you wrote Torpedo Factory. Yeah, the Torpedo Factory, but they're all classes. I haven't found, and um, I, I gotta check again, but I haven't really seen anything that's um, like a long, like an open studio, like, like you have in Maryland, where you can go and paint with people, like Zoll Studio or Howard County Arts Council, um, Hood College, has a portrait group. Don't really find those here. Here's another tip. Um, if you can paint thinner, do so. Do paint thinner if you can uh, thin out the paint with your mineral spirits or if you're using water mixable with the water um, because it will dry faster. Typically if you paint thin, it dries faster. And I want to return to this on Wednesday, so I want this to be dry. Humidity is also a thing. I think a uh, higher humidity makes it dry slow. Um, when it's less humid, it, uh, like in the in the winter when the heater's on, uh, it should, like it is now, uh, it should dry faster, at least in, in theory. I think I, I think it's about ready to enter into that stage. The uh, the the uh, subtleties stage. So it's out of the creature phase mostly. At least it's still creature-ish. And I I won't put any of the jewelry in until later. But it's less creature-like. So that's a good thing. I'll punch up the light a little bit in the larger planes but, uh, so that it'll be easier to add color over top of it. Or we could just keep it under uh, uh, an underpainting for two layers and glaze color next time if you want. Adam Long, you wrote, uh, let's see, let's see. The Visual Art Studio of Richmond has opened studios for $10 an hour for anyone else to meet and work. Hanover is, uh, you wrote, 35 minutes south of Fredericksburg. Whoa. Yeah, that's, yeah, 
Richmond, yeah, that, I mean, that would definitely be a road trip from Alexandria, but, but I'll, I'll Google it, Visual Arts Studio, if I ever go down to Richmond. I've only been to Richmond once for a rollerblading competition years ago. Thanks for sharing the info. seems to be that the art groups are more in city-like areas. Although I would consider Alexandria to be kind of city-like. Uh, but I guess this area is more tech, I guess. The angle is different on this eye, but eh, I can return to that next time. It's not a big deal. Just adding a little more light. So it dries later. But we had some really good questions this time. We always have good questions. But definitely some really good questions this time. I do appreciate it, everyone. And remember, I'll be back. If I don't get locked out of my car, uh, I'll be back on Wednesday, 6.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So, there you have it. It's less creature-like. It doesn't look like a creature as much. Still a little creature-like, and uh, I'm probably going to have to... Yep, I'm going to move this up uh, a little bit. Um, less creature-like. And that's how you can start on aluminum. Alkyds would be easier than traditional. Or acrylics would be easier than traditional uh, because it's it's super slick. Um, however, I would recommend you tone it, uh, you gesso it prior to painting and you'll have no problems. It's a really slick surface, uh, but it lends itself pretty well to highly detailed um, finishes. So this is a point where I'll ask any last minute questions. Uh, Christina just looking like Ariana Grande. Oh, God. Well, uh, at least I guess that means she's not looking like a creature. So that's good. Tile Hayes, you wrote, Huntington was your stomping grounds. Growing up as a teenager, your uncle and aunt live in Alexandria. Awesome. Pretty close. Yeah, I'm right by um, Fort Belvoir. So I'll hang out for a little bit, see if there are any last minute questions. Well, oh, right. Um, thank you so much for um, someone wrote uh, Jonas, thanks for the birthday wishes for Hugo. Uh, so my uh, 
puppy's first birthday was uh, on Friday. We threw him a birthday party on uh, on Saturday. So I'll show you a picture of him with his uh, his birthday outfit. That's pretty funny. Interesting. Yes, I'm going to show you his uh, birthday picture. He's wearing a, a costume. And behind him is my mom's dog, Sunny. So that's that's Hugo. He's, he celebrated his first birthday on Saturday. A one-year-old Shiba Inu. And behind him is a, my mom's uh, four-month-old puppy, or I think five-month-old puppy, um, a golden doodle, a poodle golden retriever. So there's Hugo with his little outfit. With his little happy birthday hat. Uh, so that was Hugo's birthday. For any of you that uh, were interested in in that. Oh, thanks, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. Cleaning off the brushes with mineral spirits. Oh yeah, you got a lot of presents. A lot of presents. One of them which was uh, a uh, dog treat um, that my wife gave him earlier today and made his stomach sick. But other than that, uh, yeah, he got a big bag of dog food. Tons of uh, treats, toys, like a, so many toys. Um, so lots of treats for his first birthday. He had a little slideshow. He had a birthday cake too. And uh, decorations. Yep, we're that kind of couple. We <laughs> throw a birthday party for our, our doggy. Okay, so looks like there are no last minute questions. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you, thank you, Christina. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, as always, I will be back again on Wednesday. I wish you all the very best, and I'll see you on the next one.